The scripture reading today is Psalm 8, which in our hymnal has the uh, kind of topic title, Divine Majesty and Human Dignity. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them, us, a little lower than God and crowned us with glory and honor. You have given us dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under our feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of God for us this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Polly, can I get you to go get something for me? In the office. Well, I wanted to, uh, to tell the story of uh, my dear uh, puppy Casey's, um, the two God moments that bracketed the 15 years of life of this puppy that I got when he was about six months old. I had um, done a, a service for a young woman she was not at the time church connected in Linden. Um, some of you have heard this story, I know. Um, Jessica had, I knew her father slightly, her grandmother then became a part of the church. She came back from Elk Grove where her family had moved, which meant she was no longer a Linden High School student, but she wanted to come back for homecoming. She did. On her way to the dance following the game, she flew off the back with a friend of a flatbed truck, landed on her head and I baptized her, and they turned off life support. So I did the funeral, and I was connected to the family. The paternal grandmother um, lived in Stockton, and her name was Clydeen, which I've never known any other Clydeens in my life, and Clydeen told me that, that I could uh, have a, a bird. I said I wanted a cocktail any time. So it was a year or two, it was a couple years later when I called her and said I was ready for a bird, and I got my bird. So he came after, the bird came after the dog. But I already had Casey, so the bird has this kind of God story as well. But Casey came to me when I was still in Linden, when a little girl by the name of Jordan brought me on a sheet of paper one day in children's time, a, a stuffed golden dog. Was, was about so high, bright yellow. Nobody knows where it came from. Grandma didn't know. Mama didn't know. Um, probably from some a fast food place. The dog was on a blue sheet of paper that Jordan, the little four-year-old, had put. She had attached the dog. He's, uh, the, he's looking out of a doghouse, which is bright cardboard. On his chest, and the details are important, on his chest is a bright rainbow colored bone. And on the left roof is a larger rainbow colored bone. So he's glued to the paper. He's looking out of this matching doghouse. And so I thought it was kind of strange. I got the dog on Monday and the following Sunday, Jordan showed up with this sheet of paper with this animal on it. That was kind of strange. And I don't remember ever, ever giving me anything any other time. 
So I told the congregation I had a new dog. It wasn't a secret, but it wasn't something I was going to share, right, at kids' time. And so after, at fellowship time, we went um, into the fellowship hall, and I was talking to uh, a couple of the adults, and we're looking at the sheet of paper. Now, I am still not in a God moment. I'm still in the reality of coincidence. Thanks, honey. I'm still in the realm of coincidence. And I said, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Jordan gives me this dog on Monday, and um, I mean, I get the dog on Monday, Jordan does this on Sunday. And as we're talking, the paper moves. Now, remember, there was a rainbow-colored bone on the left side of the roof, right? Rainbow-colored bone on the chest of the dog. Now, the paper moves to the right, and what is revealed on the right side of the roof over here, for me, is the name the people in Stockton had given that dog. C-A-S-E-Y. And all three of us gasped. This was, and it was, a, it was a, just a total God thing. Jordan didn't know that I had lost my previous dog. She didn't know anything about Casey. And when I asked Grandma about it, because Grandma brought her to church, I said, you know, where would Jordan get the dog? And Joan says, I don't. I said, Joan, did I tell you about having a new dog this the dog's name this week? She said, Alexis, I didn't know you had a new dog. So I said, well, I guess God has confirmed the name of this dog. <laughs> Casey, that was his name. Um, in the spring, in May, when it became, after 15 years, 14 and a half years, Casey and I spent together, and he started off in Linden, where nobody wanted to take him when I would go out of town because he was so hyperactive. <laughs> and in Stockton, it was still a little marginal. It wasn't until I got to Brentwood, Dolores and Franny Hassler. By that time, he was slowing down appreciably, and he was, you know, people were willing to, to take him, which really, of course, I really appreciated. Um, when it became time, for a variety of reasons, to, um, to, um, to put Casey to sleep in May, I took him to the vet I had stayed in contact with. My vet was in, still in Stockton. And um, the tech was there, the vet was there. And they said, um, they stayed, of course, until Casey's heartbeat was gone. And they said, you could stay as long as you want. And I didn't figure I would stay very long, and I didn't. Um, but I got up to leave, and of course there were little tears. The tech was crying, and I suspect that if you're if you're a vet tech, you probably cry in those situations a lot. You have a big heart for dogs, probably often of the time cats. And and so I I left quite soon after, and I had scheduled a coffee with a couple of friends of mine. And as I was driving down south on Pacific Avenue, I had the mu I had music on or something. I had I won't call it a vision because it was too momentary, but I had an image. And the image was of something kind of spherical, but it was moving. It wasn't clear whether it was kind of uh, liquidy, sort of the composition of it. It was a kind of a gold, golden brown color, and it was kind of moving, undulating, I guess is the word. And as I'm seeing that, and it's a good thing it wasn't very long, or I would have, been, I would have had a traffic accident. Um, as I'm seeing that, just noticing it, it exploded into all these little globules of light. And as it exploded, I heard a voice that I had never heard before say, Wow! Wow! And I started to cry, and I said, Well, I guess Casey's home. Whatever that means, I guess Casey's home. So... I don't know what the story, what the meaning of all that is, but you know, so many the experiences of our lives, we unpack them over the decades that follow, right? The meaning we give to various experiences. So those are my Casey's, the bookend of his life, the two God moment stories. Um, I would like to hear, have each of you who would like to share just very briefly about your pet, and I'll come around and I'll I'll listen and then I'll just I'll repeat it because this this mic isn't gonna so will but I'll repeat it so that hopefully people can uh, can hear better. Okay, so what stories do we have about the name of your cat or what you would share? Very briefly. <laughs> we are are talking about uh, we're sharing the stories we're sharing what our human experiences are of animals. 
And I just want to give, um, of course, it really is still human, but I want to share with you a, um, very briefly these five um, possibilities of how dogs, who is, the, who is the animal we have the most of, the species we have the most of today, how dogs may feel about us. First, uh, this is titled Dogs Peeves About Humans. First, yelling at me for barking. I'm a dog, you idiot. Taking me for a walk, then not letting me check stuff out. Exactly whose walk is this, anyway? <laughs> Any trick that involves balancing food on my nose. Stop it. Any haircut that involves bows or ribbons. Now you know why we chew your stuff up when you're not home. <laughs> And finally, this is my favorite, the sleight of hand, fake, fetch, throw. You fool the dog. Woo-hoo! What a proud moment for the top of the food chain. 